Do you realize it's a whole year since Mrs. Kindly saved us from a nasty accident? You remember when she was ill in bed and... Yes, of course, interrupted Edward. You told us how she waved her red dressing gown out of her window to warn you about a landslide ahead. And you and Toby gave her presents, Percy joined in. And the fat controller sent her to Bournemouth to get better. But, said James and Henry together, the rest of us have never thanked her properly. Exactly, said Thomas. So now I think we should all give her a special Christmas party. Everyone was getting very excited, and the drivers felt sure that the fat controller would agree, as indeed he did. The engines were all busy making plans when silence fell. The fat controller had bad news. The weather's changed badly. Mrs. Kindly is snowed up. Toby says he'll help to rescue her. You must help too, Thomas. There's no party unless you do. Thomas hated snow, but he said bravely, I'll try, sir. We must rescue her. We must. There's a good engine. You and Toby will manage splendidly. Thomas charged the snowdrifts fiercely. Sometimes he swept them aside. Sometimes they stuck fast and the men had to loosen them. But at the cutting near the cottage, they could go no further. Look at that, exclaimed Thomas's fireman. Peep, peep, peep. Here we are, whistled Thomas. An answering wave came from an upstairs window. Then they heard a familiar sound. That's Terence, said Thomas. He's come to help too. Sure enough, Terence had a snowplow and was working hard to clear a path to the railway line and safety. At long last, the rescue was complete. Percy took the tired workman home. Terence said goodbye to Mrs. Kindly and promised to take care of her cottage as he watched them all set off. The engines made good time. No more snow had fallen, but the yard was dark. Thomas's heart sank. Suddenly, all the lights went on. What a marvelous sight awaited Mrs. Kindly. Well done, said the fat controller. I'm really proud of you all. Mrs. Kindly especially thanked the smaller engines. Thomas and Toby are all friends, she said. And now, Percy, you are my friend too. Percy was very pleased. Three cheers for Mrs. Kindly, he called. Peep, 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 they all whistled. Thomas collected the tree safely, but large snowdrifts lay ahead. I mustn't be late, he thought. The fat controller is relying on me. Whistling bravely, Thomas tried to move, but he couldn't. There was worse to come. Poor Thomas was snowed under. Meanwhile, the other engines waited and waited. They were grumbling about Thomas for being late. Silence, said the fat controller. Thomas left the work safely, but snow has brought the telephone lines down. We must assume he is stranded. The engines now felt sorry for Thomas, and cold but confident, the twins set off to the rescue. Suddenly, they came to a drift that was deeper than the rest. Hush, said Donald. I can hear something. Probably the wind, said Douglas. Help. No, listen, insisted Donald. Over here. Look, it's Thomas. Come on, the poor wee engine must be frozen to the frames in there. When the workmen arrived, it took some time to decide how to dig away the heavy drifts of snow. Thomas's driver and fireman, who had taken shelter at a nearby cottage, joined the rescue. At last, Thomas and the precious Christmas tree were freed from the snowdrift.
Then they set off once more to finish their long journey. The fat controller greeted them warmly. As a reward for all your hard work, you may go and enjoy the carols. Be quick now. At the big station, all was soon ready. One, two, three. Suddenly, like magic, the station was flooded with lights. Ladies, gentlemen, and children, I give you three cheers for Thomas the Tank Engine and all his friends who have made this occasion possible. Whee! Percy gave a ghostly whistle. Don't be frightened, Thomas, he laughed. It's only me. Your ugly fizz is enough to frighten anyone, said Thomas. You're like ugly indeed. I'm a green caterpillar with red stripes, continued Thomas firmly. You crawl like one too. I don't. Who's been late every afternoon this week? It's the hay. I can't help that, said Thomas. Time's time, and the fat controller relies on me to keep it. I can't if you crawl in the hay till all hours. Green caterpillar indeed, fumed Percy. He set off to collect some hay to take to the harbour. Everyone says I'm handsome, or at least nearly everyone. Anyway, my curves are better than Thomas's corners. Thomas says I'm always late, he grumbled. I'm never late, or at least only a few minutes. What's that to Thomas? He can always catch up time further on. All the same, he and his driver decided to start home early. Then came trouble. A crate of treacle was upset all over Percy. Percy was cross. He was still sticky when he puffed away. The wind was blowing fiercely. Look at that, exclaimed the driver. The wind caught the piled hay, tossing it up and over the track. The lion climbed here. Take a run at it, Percy, his driver advised. Percy gathered speed, but the hay made the rails slippery and his wheels wouldn't grip. Time after time, he stalled with spinning wheels and had to wait till the line ahead was cleared before he could start again. Everyone was waiting. Thomas seethed impatiently. Ten minutes late, I warned him, passengers will complain and the fat controller. Then they all saw Percy. They laughed and shouted. Sorry I'm late, Percy panted. Look what's crawled out of the hay, teased Thomas. What's wrong, asked Percy. Talk about hairy caterpillars, puffed Thomas. It's worth being late to have seen you. Bad weather's due. My help's always needed. Mind how you go, Percy. Ah, off, Percy. As long as I've got rails to run on, I can go anywhere in any weather anyhow. Goodbye. He set off for the beach. It was a beautiful day, but Edward was worried. Be careful, he warned. There's a storm coming. A promise is a promise, thought Percy, no matter what the weather. The children had a lovely day, but by tea time, dark clouds loomed ahead. Annie and Clarabel were glad when Percy arrived. He was just in time. Rain streamed down Percy's boiler. Oh, he shivered and thought of his nice dry shed. Percy struggled on past coastal villages and into the countryside. The river was rising fast. 
I wish I could see, I wish I could see, complained Percy, as he battled against the rain. More trouble lay ahead. Oh, hissed Percy, the water is sloshing my fire. Percy's driver and fireman had to find some more firewood. I'll have some of your floorboards, please, said the fireman to the guard. I only swept the floor this morning, grumbled the guard, but he still helped. Soon Percy's fire was burning well. He felt warm and comfortable again. Then he saw Harold. Oh, dear thought Percy. Harold's come to laugh at me. Something thudded onto Percy's boiler. Ow! exclaimed Percy. He needn't throw things. It's a parachute, laughed his driver. Harold's dropping hot drinks for us. Thank you, Harold, whistled Percy. Good to be of service, replied Harold, and he buzzed away. Water lapped Percy's wheels. Percy was losing steam again, but he plunged bravely on. I promised, he panted, I promised. He made one more big effort, and at last, exhausted but triumphant, he brought the train home. Well done, Percy, cheered Thomas. You kept your promise despite everything. Fat controller arrived. Your parts are worn, Toby, so you must go to the works to be mended. Can I take Henrietta, sir? No. What would the passengers do without her? Toby saw Percy by the water tower. Don't worry, Toby, said Percy. I'll take care of Henrietta until you get back. Soon Toby was out on the main line. He clanked as he trundled along. He's a little engine with small wheels. His tanks don't hold much water. He had come a long way and began to feel thirsty. In the distance was a signal. Good, he thought. There's a station ahead. I can have a nice drink and a rest until James has passed. Toby's driver thought so too. Toby was enjoying his drink when the signalman came up. He had never seen Toby before. Toby's driver tried to explain, but the new signalman wouldn't listen. We must clear the line for James with the express. You'll have to get more water at the next station. Toby clanked sadly away. Hurrying used a lot of water, and his tanks were soon empty. Poor Toby was out of steam and stranded on the main line. We must warn James, said the fireman. Then he saw Percy and Henrietta. Please, take me back to the station. It's an emergency. Henrietta hated leaving Toby. Never mind, said Percy. You're taking the fireman to warn James. That's a big help. Henrietta felt much better. James was fuming when he heard the news. I'm going to be late. My fault, said the signalman. I didn't understand about Toby. Now, James, said his driver, you'll have to push Toby. What, me? Me? Push Toby and pull my train too? Grumbling dreadfully, James set off to find Toby. He came up behind Toby and gave him a bump. Get on, you! James had to work very hard. When he reached the workstation, he felt exhausted. Some children were on the platform. Coo, said one, the express is late and it's got two engines. I think James couldn't pull it on his own, so Toby had to help him. Never mind, James, whispered Toby. They're only joking. Ha ha, said James. One December morning, Thomas whistled to all his friends. It's nearly Christmas and I'll bring you lots of letters and parcels. But a week later, the storms came.
Percy was making good time on his way to the village when suddenly... What's that? called his driver. There ahead was a fog man by the line. He was holding a red light. The village is cut off by snow, he shouted. We need snow ploughs, workmen and a helicopter. Leave your trucks in the sidings and go back quickly. Suddenly, there was Thomas with Terence the tractor and the works train. Come on, Percy, whistled Thomas. Follow me. The two engines battled their way through the snow. At last, they reached the village. Harold was already there, busily dropping food to people and animals. Terence quickly got to work. Lovely stuff, he said as he pushed the snow aside. Well done, Percy. Well done, Thomas, cheered the villagers. You're the best Santa Claus this village has ever had. What's a Santa Claus? asked Percy. Santa Claus is someone who drops presents down chimneys at Christmas time. Percy looked at his funnel. I wonder if... No, laughed Thomas. Chimneys, Percy, not funnels. Which reminds me, your post train is still back in the siding, isn't it? Percy hurried back to fetch it. Just then, Toby arrived with Henrietta. We've brought lots of hot drinks and food for the villagers, he whistled. That night, all the engines had gone back to their sheds except Toby. The villagers had made a plan to thank the engines. They loaded paint pots and parcels into Henrietta, then they set off through the moonlit countryside. All the engines were fast asleep in the sheds as Toby ran silently into the yard. He had no idea what the villagers were going to do, but he knew it was going to be a big surprise. When the engines woke the next morning, they could not believe their eyes. The sheds had been repainted and decorated. Parcels lay everywhere. The engines whistled in delight and everyone agreed that it was really a happy Christmas. You'll need your snowplow for the next journey, Thomas, said his driver. Huh! <laughs> Snow is silly soft stuff. It won't stop me. The snowplow was heavy and uncomfortable and made Thomas cross. He shook it and he banged it, and when they got back, it was so damaged that the driver had to take it off. You're a very naughty engine, he said to Thomas. Next morning, Thomas's driver and fireman came early and worked hard to mend the snowplow, but they couldn't make it fit. Thomas was pleased. I shan't have to wear it, I shan't have to wear it, he puffed to Annie and Clarabel. But they were rather worried. I hope it's all right, I hope it's all right, they whispered to each other. The driver was worried too. It's not bad here, he said to the fireman, but it's sure to be deep in the valley. Silly soft stuff, puffed Thomas. I didn't need that stupid old thing yesterday, and I shan't today. Snow can't stop me. He rushed into a tunnel thinking how clever he was, but there was trouble ahead. Cinders and ashes, said Thomas. I'm stuck. And he was. Back, Thomas. Back, said his driver. Thomas tried, but his wheels spun and he couldn't move. The guard went back for help while everyone else tried to dig the snow away. But as fast as they dug, more snow slipped down until Thomas was nearly buried. Oh, my wheels and coupling rods. I shall have to stop here till I'm frozen. What a silly engine I am and Thomas began to cry. At last, a bus came to rescue the passengers. And then, who should come to Thomas's rescue but Terence? Snow never worries him. Pulled the empty coaches away, then came back for Thomas. 
Thomas's wheels were clear but still spun when he tried to move. Terence tugged and slipped and slipped and tugged and at last dragged Thomas clear of the snow, ready for the journey home.